So you're preparing yourself for a job interview or for a university interview or you're just interested in C Sharp or even math or the combination of the two and you would like to know how to write a program that will help you to find out if a number is an Armstrong number or not. And if you don't know what an Armstrong number is, we are going to cover that as well. So either way, stay with us and enjoy this video. All right, so what is an Armstrong number? Because before we can figure out if a number is an Armstrong number or not, we need to know what an Armstrong number is. And we're going to start with that. Therefore, I have this definition, but this definition is quite complex in my opinion, even though I really tried to make it as simple as possible. I think what helps more are those two graphics that we have here. So an Armstrong number is a number where this number here is equal to this number right here at the bottom right hand side. So why is that the case for this specific number? Why is this an Armstrong number? Well, you take the first digit. So here it's the one raised to the power of three plus the five raised to the power of three and plus the three raised to the power of three. So it's always the amount of digits that you have here. So this is this exponent that you have here. And then you do the calculation. So one to the power of three is one, five to the power of three is 125 and three to the power of three is 27. So you have a total of 157 if you make the sum out of those numbers. And then if this number here is equal to the number here at the top, then you are talking about an Armstrong number. By the way, if you check out Wikipedia, you will find this also under the name narcissistic number or plus perfect number or plus perfect digital invariant. So quite some names here, PPDI is also a way of stating this kind of number. So either of those names are the same thing. So now let's compare this with 123. We again have three digits in total. So we need to raise the digits to the power of three. So one to the power of three plus two to the power of three plus three to the power of three. And you can see the sum of it is 36, which is not 123. So this is not an Armstrong number. You can of course check out the list of Armstrong numbers between one and 100,000 here. You can see there are in fact not as many Armstrong numbers in a certain range. If you look at it, the largest known Armstrong number is the number you can see here. I'm not going to try to tell you what <laughs> this number is in a spoken language, but it's quite a long number. And probably this number will be even bigger by the time you watch this video because technology has come forward and well, maybe we found an even larger Armstrong number in the future. All right, now let's go ahead and create a console application. And I'm going to call this one Armstrong number and let's get started. So what this software that we're going to build should do is it should take a number that the user enters and it should then check if that number is in fact such an Armstrong number or not. So what we are going to require is the original number. So basically the number that the user has input and that's what we get here. So we set the original number to be int.parse and whatever the user has entered. So we're not using a try catch block here because we're just expecting the user to actually enter a number in case the user wouldn't enter a number and for example, a letter, then our program would crash of course. So you could of course use try parse here instead or even a try and catch block. But I'm gonna keep it simple here because we're really focusing on how to get this Armstrong number program running. And then I need to have a variable which will be the remainder. So it's going to store a single digit as well as our sum. So I need to know what is the sum of the calculations that we're going to do. And then I also need to make sure that I store the temporary number for a temporary time so that we can compare it to the original number eventually. All right, so what I'm saying here is that the temp number should now be the original number. So whatever the user has entered should then be our temp number. And now let's go ahead and create the actual logic. All right, so the next step is to create this while loop. And we want to make sure that this code runs as long as original number is greater than zero. And what we do is we set the remainder to be the original number modulo 10. 
So what that will give us, for example, for the value of 305 is it will return five because we are dividing it by 10 and then we take the remainder. So it will return five here, which means we have 30 remainder five. Okay, so that's what this remainder is going to store. Then we take the sum, which at the beginning was zero. So we set that to zero and we add the remainder to the power of three. So remainder times remainder times remainder. And then we just calculate the original number to be the old original number divided by 10. So if it was 305 before, now it's going to be 30.5. And then it's going to store 30 because original number, if we look at it, is an integer, so it cannot have any floating type values. So it's going to cut off the number at 30. And this is going to be rerun up to the point where the original number is actually going to be zero, and then this while loop will be done. So now at this point, the sum will be the sum of whatever remainder times remainder times remainder is, and that for all of the iterations of that while loop, and in the end, we will have a comparison to make, is that temp number, so the number that we stored, or in which we stored whatever the user entered, and the sum, which we just calculated, equal. If that's the case, then we have an Armstrong number. And if that's not the case, then we don't have an Armstrong number. Now let's test that application and find out if a number is actually an Armstrong number or not. So I'm going to take the 305 that we had and it says entered number is not an Armstrong number. All right, now let's run it again. And this time I'm going to enter 153 which is an Armstrong number, and it says entered number is an Armstrong number. All right, now let's try another one. Let's try 370, which is another Armstrong number. And we can see the entered number is an Armstrong number. Quick pause. In this video, you'll learn something about C-sharp. And if you want to learn everything there is to know that you need for the fundamentals and to become a real C-Sharp developer, then definitely check out my C-Sharp Masterclass in which you're going to learn all of the things you need to know about C-Sharp. So you're going to learn how to do the basics, how to use object-oriented programming, how to use WPF in order to create your own user interfaces, how to use databases, how to use link, how to create your own games using Unity, and a lot more. So if you want to become a real C-Sharp developer, definitely check out the link in the description below. All right, now let's look at it in more depth. So I have the same program with the difference that I have a little bit more details. So I have a bunch of right line statements which will help me to understand what is going on. So first of all, we have this code here, which is basically just writing something onto the console saying that we want to have something before the logic, which is our original number, the temporary number and the sum of digit. So the sum is, by the way, zero. So it's going to be zero either way. But then we have during the logic. So that is inside of the logic what is going on in that while loop or during the while loop. And now let's look at what we are going to print here. So first of all, we're going to print the remainder number. Then we're going to get the sum. And then we're going to print out the original number. Everything else is the same. The logic is still the same as it was before. We just get a little bit more of an output for our execution here. Then we have another line of dashes and finally the result, if a number is an Armstrong number or not. Now let's test it with an Armstrong number, for example, 153, which is an Armstrong number, as we have seen before. Now let's run this and we can see that first of all, our remainder is three, then our sum at that point is 27. So why is that? Well, the remainder is going to be three because 153 divided by, and let's go to the logic now to this while loop, divided by 10 will be 15 remainder three. So we have a remainder of three. Then the sum of single digit numbers is 27. That is zero plus three times three times three, which is 27. Then the original number is 15. Why is that? Well, that is because we are taking here at this point 153 divided by 10, which is 
15.3, but because this is an integer, we just take away this dot three and we just have this whole number of 15. So the original number is 15. So in the second iteration, we have this execution once again, where our remainder is five, because 15 divided by 10 is one remainder five. And then we take the sum of the single digit numbers, which is going to be 27. So here, 27 plus the remainder times the remainder times the remainder, which is five times five times five, which is 125. 125 plus 27 is 152. And then we take the remainder number, which is one, because that's what we got from the original number. Original number divided by 10 is 15 divided by 10, which is one dot five. But as this is an integer, it's just going to be one. And then we take this remainder number one, then we take the sum of the single digit number, which is 152 plus one times one times one, which is still one. So 152 plus one is 153. So the original number that we entered here is the same as the sum, which means that we have an Armstrong number. All right, so let's try this once again with another number. Let's try it with 111. So we start, the remainder is one. So 111 divided by 10 is going to be 11 remainder one. Sum of single digit number is one because one, zero plus one times one times one is one. The original number is 11 because 111 divided by 10 is 11.1, but we are just using integers here, so it's 11. Then we calculate the remainder number, which is 11 divided by 10, which is one remainder one. Then the sum of single digit numbers is going to be two because one plus one times one times one is still one. So it's one plus one, which is two. And then we have the original number, which is our original number from before, which was 11 divided by 10. So 11 divided by 10 is one dot one, but again, this is an integer. And then the remainder is one because one divided by 10 is zero, remainder one. And then we have the sum of single digit numbers, which is one plus one plus one times one times one, which is three. And we have the original number, which is zero at that point. And because it's zero, we are out of this loop and we can see if the number is an Armstrong number or not. And 111, obviously, in this case, is not an Armstrong number. Now, there is a little problem with this while loop or this program that we have here. It is limited because it's only working for Armstrong numbers, which are in the range of 100 and 999, because we have only remainder times remainder times remainder. So it is limited to only work for three digit numbers. So how would you now adjust this code for it to work not only for numbers with three digits, but no matter how many digits you have. So please go ahead and pause the video and try that real quick, and then come back once you're done. In order to fix this, you need to understand one thing, and that is that this to the power two that we're using here, so this three, for example, is the amount of digits that we have. So you need to know how many digits does the number that the user entered have. And once you know that, then you will know to which power you need to raise a specific variable. So that is what I did. I got this new variable here in num length, which takes the original number and makes a string out of it to get the length of it. And length is then going to return an integer. So it's fine to have this being a data type int. So now we have the num length. And now we can go ahead and calculate the sum based on the old sum plus math.pow, which gives us the power, which gives us the power. Well, in this case, we can raise something to the specified powers. So it's going to raise to the power of num length. And yeah, everything else should stay the same. So now let's take, for example, 1,634 and check if that's going to work. So 1,634. Let's see, and it says the number is an Armstrong number. And we can even see that here, the sum is 1,634. And you can also see that we had four iterations 
because, well, this number has four digits. That's why we needed four iterations of the while loop. And now our code should work for any type of number that fits into an integer, because as you might know, the integer itself is limited by the amount of numbers that it can hold and by its size, basically. So if you run it again, and now we take a huge number such as 54,748, well, it's not huge, but it's, it's a big number. If we take this one now, we can see that this is an Armstrong number because here you can see the sum is also this number. So you can play around with this and try to understand what it does with all of those numbers that you enter. So if I just enter another number, you can see that this is not an Armstrong number because the entered number, the original number, is not equal to the sum of the single digit number at the end. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please leave a like. And if you loved it, then please leave a sub and consider to also leave a comment if you have any type of questions or if you have any ideas for future topics that we could cover. And in general, if you just want to chat a little bit, leave a comment. And then also check out one of those videos. I hope to see you in one of them. Have a nice day.